is TuneCore a legit way to start your career? I think it is. I, I know in the beginning, um, Biggs had put me with the people that were starting TuneCore. I forgot the dude's name and we were talking to him. I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I think anytime you can um, outsource certain things, and someone will do it for you and get a fee. You make it keeps your company lean, and it cuts out a lot of the people that you don't want to deal with. Right. So conceptually, it seems like it makes sense. You, you know, I've seen a lot of people do well with it. Yeah, I know some people that's doing well with it. Yeah. And you test your demographic out real easy. But you know, I haven't really been completely on it or anything like that lately. So I'm sure there's a bunch of innovations I couldn't tell you, but I haven't been in the game. You know what I'm saying? So what's what's the what's the deal with Dusko Whiskey right now? Um, well, right now I want to make it in America, so I need to get the exact... How hard is that? I mean, it's just you have to curate the taste, you know what I'm saying? So you have to go to different distilleries, and you just have People to get it. really grab that same... Well, also, you know, I'm, I, 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 um, I, would, mar I would let them uh, age in, in sherry barrels, so it has to age for a while, so that would take a minute, you know what I mean? So it's also, I got to curate it, so once I find that... Thing. And that takes years, right? No, no, no. Once I get it, yeah, okay. it would take. It was taking years for me just because I didn't know. The, like now we know. I know the taste. I know exactly what I want. I know more about it. So I know cut. I know exactly what how to do it. Like I, it's basically okay. we can give them the recipe. Okay. And what happens is usually you get like a base whiskey and then you start to add shit to it and that's what makes your whiskey better than somebody else. Flavors and different. You know, just yeah, like, yeah, like I'm throwing cut on mine. I, I, you know what I mean? I'm not cut, but I'm just putting a little bit of that sherry, letting it marinate there and smooth it out. You know what I mean? Right. Shit like that. You know what I mean? But I, I like the whole process. You know, tasting like you've seen, like I got right. samples, yeah, I'm doing samples. tastings and all this type of stuff. So I like the process, but we still got bottles out there, but um, it just was too hard to do work with people Overseas, so when things weren't right, remember I was out for like three months. Was, yeah. You know, it's just business stuff. What about beer like, and stuff like that? Was you going to that? Yeah, why not? If I feel like if I have the bandwidth, like I want to do everything, but it's about bandwidth. Like you have ideas, but having the ability to execute, you have to have a team, and that yeah. shit takes like time. The thing about doing something professional is it's nothing you could do like one or two hours a day. You have to have at least someone fighting for your agenda eight to twelve hours a day, all day at least five days a week to compete with any, cause that's what everyone else is doing. Yeah. You understand? So you, you can't just think cause you're skilled and you get minimal energy and effort and you work sometimes, you're not gonna compete until you have that kind of discipline. So basically you have to have the money to really- The money or a strategic yeah. alliance or a right. partnership. You just have to be able to execute. You have to have the ability to develop it, the ability to market it, and the ability to put it out and have distribution. You have to have sales, you know, you have to, have, it's a lot of paperwork. Like, you know, it's a lot of shit you have to do when you start a business. An idea is great, mm -hmm. but you know, to really ex execute it or know someone to execute. Plus the first time you do anything, you fuck it up. No one does anything the first time perfect. Absolutely. It never happens. Yeah. So you have to make mistakes and that like slows you up. That's the learning experience. But that's the best thing going is like if you step into something and you make those mistakes well, I'm, early. I, if you're, I'm a serial entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. some people get good at one thing and they stay doing that shit for their whole life. Yeah. Me, if I'm going to do the music, I got good at it. Let me go do the fashion. I want to get good at it. Let me do the art. I want to get good at it. Let me do the liquor. You know what I'm saying? So and It's a challenge to you. That's why you do that. It's I just like a challenge just, of business. I just like finding, I like I like understanding how to get to the plug and then being the plug. Pause. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I can't really think no other way. So every time Smart. I approach something, I just approach it and, well, who's the plug? And then once I figure out who the plug, how can I be the plug? Huh. And then I figure it out. It's like I'm even it. even asking those questions though, like being like for the years you were in the music business. Even I noticed that you ask a lot of questions. Yeah. And some people might take it as, oh, well, you know, why you need to know that? You got that a lot of the music business, I'm sure. Like people, you would ask people like, well, how does this? I mean, that's part who, of who handles the distribution for this? Who handles this? Or like, I I never think it's a bad thing to pick somebody's brain, right. and I never mind when somebody picks mine. Like, the more questions you ask, the smarter you are. Then we can do business. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm never gonna pretend that I don't know something or that I know something that I do. Yeah. So if I don't know, I'm gonna ask the that's question. That's the dummy. You know what I'm saying? Somebody fronts like you know thing, something. And the yeah. thing about it is, you can ask somebody a question, and, and 
they can answer it, but you still don't understand. Yeah. So I might ask it like three or four different ways because you might be telling me your way, but I'm, I don't understand it. I got the question. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to move forward, because I do things in math and logic. Yeah. So in order for me to say, okay, one plus one equals two. Okay, I got to get past that. If one plus one equals three, I can't go no further. Mm -hmm. I got to get past what's illogical to me mm -hmm. before I can even hear the rest yeah. of the equation. Yeah. Yeah. You understand know what, what I'm saying? So it's like you can talk all you want. If I don't understand this, I'm not moving forward. Yeah. And a lot of people skim through things they don't understand and by the sake of being embarrassed about a question or, or, or not wanting to interrupt, but it's not productive right. and it's a waste of time. And then usually when people don't answer those questions on that level, they're trying to hide something, especially when it comes to doing business. Most real business people appreciate questions. Yeah. Only time you don't appreciate questions is when you don't want to give the answer because the answer is not really right. the right or one. Or you're doing something sneaky. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? So yeah. when, when someone gets offended by my questions, that to me means they hide you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But I mean, it's all part of the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. But like you told me that before, you said usually when people don't answer questions or don't come direct, they're usually hiding something. Yeah, they're bullshit. Yeah, they're bullshitting. Fluff. Man. You know what I mean? It's a fluffy conversation. What about the G5? How's G5 working out right now? Well, you know, out in Vegas, you know, big shout out to Larry. And, oh, it was uh, a drought out there. So that. Yeah, it's a drought. It was a state of emergency. You know, a weed drop, like well, good weed. It went once it went recreational. It's selling out. You know wow. what I'm saying? So, you know, there's a lot of things and, and innovations that are about to happen out there. It's gonna be packaged up like cigarettes in a minute. Just, I mean, all that's happening. Yeah, yeah. But it's just honestly, you know, if you can. All you got to do is make it well, and you'll be able to do it. But it's, there's, again, it's not easy to just grow out there. It's not a business that you could just say, okay, I want to grow and get into. Yeah. It, it's crazy because... You got to have a facility set up. The, right? the average drug dealer out there is like a banker or a lawyer mm -hmm. or a legislator and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It, it's not really that easy. They don't just let anybody do it. You got to go through a lot to be able to... Uh, you know, have the licenses and, and, and be ready with the timing and, and then the way they want it, uh, the way it's regulated and how clean they make it, your facility got to be so ill. It's really like doing something that is medical. Real agricultural. I mean, <laughs> it's they, like farming. They, it's they farming definitely, they definitely yeah. look at it like food. Yeah. And, and speaking of food, um, um, I recently looked at a documentary that I suggest everybody watch called What the Health. And not only me, but anyone that I know that's watched it has become a complete vegan. What the hell? Right after. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's a matter of, like, sanitary. There's a lot of doo-doo mm. food. But I think I suggest everybody watch it. But I've been, like, a vegan. And I don't even call it vegan. I'm water-based. I don't want to say vegan. Plant-based. I'm plant-based. I'm plant-based. I'm plant-based. I'm plant-based. Plant 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 um, but, um, for, like, two weeks. And have no desire to eat anything. You know what I mean? Uh, but I did do the research. Like, if you are going to eat meat, I, I suggest you know who's, like, killing it and what farm is coming from and all that. Right, like, you I said got, something about free range. Yeah, like, I'm going to yeah. go to a farmer's market and yeah, make sure they're moving around on the grass. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But other than that, I'm not trying to do so much of that. <laughs> make sure they're moving around on the grass. Yeah, because they're just sitting there. They got doo-doo all over them. And then when they put it in the cut, cut them up, the doo-doo gets in there and pus. And the doo-doo makes the stuff get infected. Which makes pus, oh, man. and it's like a pus tolerance. You know what I'm saying? And they just throw it all in the machine and chop that shit up. They're not allowed to clean it. You know what I'm saying? You cannot separate that. Well, it's think about it. Like, do you trust corporate? So can you imagine? Like, food is very corporate, right? right. So how could you trust any corporate that's making food? Right. You know, just logically speaking. You know what I mean? You could look the other way. But just logically speaking, because the people in corporate don't even eat that stuff. They don't even eat the I'm just, stuff anything, they sell. Anything, anything mass made, they're gonna try to make as right. much of it as right. cheap as possible. The GMO people don't eat GMO stuff, man. I mean, I don't know what they eat, but yeah. I know I don't. Nah, you know what I mean? And after, you know, why would they? And they gonna sell all that doo doo all over them because they all smashed up together, and then they throw that all in the chopping block. It just gets in the food. You know what I mean? Damn. So just on a sanitary level. It was, I just, it just, it just grossed me out. Yeah, it's crazy because uh, my uncle worked at a hot dog factory and he oh, said that. Man. Yeah, he said that's the worst. Rocky just told me that hot dogs is, is, is all even, everything. The eyeballs, even, the, but even the, it's all wrapped, it's all wrapped up in pig intestines. Yeah, right. Yeah. Even the beef, even the turkey, even the chicken ones. Yeah. The chicken apple still got pork intestines on it. And pork is disgusting. Like, oh my yeah. God. The pigs, shit they do with pigs. And pigs do. eat glass. They eat everything. Well, they, 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 they do them. two times more than they any eat, other they animal. Yeah, they, and it's because it's around, they recycle it. Just fucking re-give it to them and shit. Spray them with it and shit. Like, put it in the water. And it's just really bad. Yeah, man. So, know, what the hell? What the hell? Man. On Netflix. Yeah. I saw that one on Netflix. 
And if you check the Diabetes Network, like Rocky is like, because she's the one that really educates me. And, you know, that's what's great about Wifey for Lifey, because she's just always trying to make, make me have a good lifey. That's what's great about Wifey for Lifey. She's always trying to make sure that I got a good lifey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of, kind of rhyme. Kind of rhyme. But anyway, yeah. um, you know, Questions. she's always talking about cooking, and mm -hmm. you know, because now we have to adjust our, our diet. So she's always talking about all the healthy stuff, and even down to how she feeds the dogs. Yeah. So you can catch all that on the Dash. I like that. The, the, the cooking show is gonna be on the Dash. Dash that be yeah. network. Yeah. Cooking show. You gotta, you know, uh, yeah, the other pizza. When y'all made the pizza that day, it was crazy. Yeah, the cauliflower pizza with the yeah. crust. The cauliflower crust. So it was cauliflower crust. Yeah. Like, wow. Rocky could tell you. Yeah. It's good, and it's good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's guilt free. Yeah. Man. I like guilt free food, B. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's good. He was he was like, damn. Man, I always say it, it don't make no sense to buy designer clothes and expensive cars and jewelry and eat cheap food. Yeah. Like if anything, if yeah, food should be designer. You rockin' polo at Popeye's. Yeah, like, I'm not, you know. Gucci. I'm, yeah, got that Gucci food. You know what I'm saying? Your you food is special and some fries and the crackhead behind you is ordering the same thing. Yeah, basically, I'm not eating the same food as a, yeah. as a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? My food goes. Go over there to churches, get you a little box special. And just, no, you, you go know, get to the church. <laughs> you, go get to, you, you go and deliver it like UPS. You that's so why you got all that brown on it. That's the UPS inspired hip hop motivation. <laughs> He's like, yo, let me get the UPS brown. Got that Christmas robe on right now. You know what I'm saying? It's always, always Christmas in this yeah. house. Hey, it's always Christmas in this house, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nah, but real talk, like, I mean, that's crazy. So you just stop eating. I've never ever, because you eat steaks, you you all, you know. Not like, anymore. That's hard. The that's that's been tough steak. for you. She still, she still, Rocky still feeds the dogs some grass fed steak, but I don't eat that shit right now. Yeah. Not right now. I'm not saying, like, if I want it, I eat it, but I'm yeah. not going to eat dirty meat. Pause. Like, I got to know where that meat is. Pause. I got to know where that shit. Past I, I, like I have, I have the um, the, the farm. I got it from the, the farmers market. I got the Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at like you just have to ask questions. Like ask your butcher where they got that meat, man. You know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, that's that's crazy. Because the number one cause of diabetes and cancer is meat. Period. That's what. That's the shit that poisons you the most. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying meat and all the shit that goes in there. So you know, it is what it is. You know, I prefer not to have to go through that. What they say about seafood on that video? Nothing. Yeah, the same no, shit. Anything same. GMO is not right. Anything duplicated is not good. I don't know about the doo doo factor, shit. but you know, fish. Damn, they everything. But fish swim in. One of the reasons why I don't eat fish is they swim in their doo doo anyway all day. Yeah, they. Yeah. They, they swim in their doo doo. Right. Fish yeah. swim in their doo doo. Yeah. All the fish women all they do is, is you know what I mean? So it's kind of a nasty. I never ate fish. That's one of the reasons. Wow. I just be out of them. Yes, it's not your, it's just not your bad man. You never like, you like steaks. And shit. I don't like now. I like vegetables, uh -huh. pasta and shit like that, mm. and, and fruit. Of course. Wow. You know what I mean? What's happening? This the big homie Kenyatta. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube page. And if you haven't already, hit the notification so you can get an alert each and every time our hip hop motivation videos come up. And also, thank you for your support. Peace and blessings. In life, everyone's dealt different cards. And I was dealt the diabetes card. I'm a type one diabetic. My sister's godfather's diabetic. and He developed type two diabetes. When I was younger, I really didn't know anybody else that had diabetes. You know, not many people talk about it when they have it. They look at it as a weakness, where I look at it as a strength. People with diabetes feel the sense of shame or depression. I never felt that. I never felt that. I, I feel like a diabetic. That. that card That's got right. dealt you deal Boom. with. Boom. This is like ghetto gourmet right here. <laughs> You're telling me this isn't gonna affect my sugar or nothing. And taste I, this good. No, I don't think it's gonna affect your sugar at all. You know any diabetes? It runs in my family. Really? Yeah. By 2030, there's gonna be a third of the population is gonna be diabetic. Me as a diabetic, getting with a person that's not diabetic, it's like basically giving them the disease with you. Diabetes is not a weakness. It's a place to showcase your strength. It shows that you could do everything that everybody else could do plus that. You just became yeah, diabetic? Yeah, I just got type one three years ago. If you wanna learn more about being a diabetic and being cool while you're diabetic and the lifestyle of a diabetic, check out the Dash Diabetes Network. Listen, for mad years, I walked around with my neck looking like a Nestle Crunch Bar. I had to do something about it. What I found is that a razor bump is nothing but an ingrown hair that curls into the skin and causes the skin to become enlarged or inflamed, making it look like a bump. But it's not a pimple. 
it's a hair that grows into the skin causing inflammation. You have to remove that hair and then you have to use yourself a nice skin astringent, something that can do the trick, something that can get rid of those razor bumps. So what did I create? Bump Assassin, organic skin astringent. To order your own bottle of Bump Assassin, go to hiphopmotivation.bigcartel.com. When are you writing a book, Dave? I'm writing it. I also have a book. You know, I have a um, <laughs> book called Culture Vultures. Yeah, I What's it called? It's mm-hmm. called Culture Vultures. I did. If you, have you ever been looking at the hip hop motivations that I do? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, yeah. me and um, Kenyana did a book, and I've already, it's already written. He wrote it. We we done with it, and I'm also giving it out in different ways. So it's gonna be an auditory experience as well. It's a series. The fashion game. Culture Vultures, the book. Okay. In business, Dame is a guy that's worn many hats. Yo, you can either think of a master plan or get mastered by somebody else's plan. Check it. As a barber, one of the most important life lessons I learned is to never do anything without seeing the ending result first. Before I understood the value of seeing results, I used to waste a lot of time sometimes doing double work because I didn't have a vision of where I was going. Then I started taking consultations more serious by not even turning on my clippers until I had a clear understanding of the result my client was planning to see. And in turn, it became easier to achieve the style they wanted to see in half the time. Real talk, the most successful barbers and beauticians are the ones that see the ending results before they start any service. Write this down. Before making any moves, know where you're going. Deciding from thoughts of being sick and tired of something, starting something, or admiring something can be the emotions that fuel change. Because write this down. Emotion leads to passion, passion leads to action, and action leads to results. Word up. Question, what's the number one killer of dreams? If you said fear, you're wrong. Fear is on the list, but it's not the number one killer. The number one killer of dreams is comfort. The comfort of a good paying job or in an active relationship can seduce us for many years into the rhythm of accepting things without making any moves to change. Further numbing us into a state of zombie-like passiveness. Write this down. Passiveness will cause your dreams to pass you by. Thinking about something. Like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm a musician. Yeah, exactly. I like to spend all kinds of money. Like the dollar, the euro, like the pound, like the franc pause, like the yen. 